Good afternoon, everyone. Joining us physically here at the Hanover Messe and uh, in video, you know, live stream. My name is Sebastián Santibáñez. I'm a director of offerings at GFT, and I focus on industrial and manufacturing AI solutions. Um, I have this time for to share with you a presentation and share some insights about how we can achieve more, can we achieve a streamlined portfolio of executable AI-backed products, AI-backed solutions that are relevant and beneficial for the industry sector. Uh, I want to thank uh, our host of Litmus, uh, Litmus IoT, for, for having us here in the Slowly booth. And um, yeah, let's see, this is what I want to share to, uh, with you today. Uh, we we'll are start describing a little bit what is the AI-driven smart enterprise and where are we today from a point of view of AI? AI you know, where is it now? Where is it going? And why we are where we are? Then I want to tell you a little bit of the things that we at GFT do that make a difference for our clients and why our clients trust us to deliver complex solutions that benefit their, their bottom lines. Then I'm going to share with you a little bit of uh, strategic advice um, on specifically how we can clients can ensure that their AI portfolio is executed. And a few uh, tricks, a few points of view that we have uh, developed over our history of success uh, developing solutions for from the industrial sector. Um, so let's start then talking about this AI-driven enterprise. Where, where is AI now going? Where is it now? And, and let's ask a starting question, why AI? Why AI is because AI, not just as a technology, but as a paradigm has evolved quite a bit over the last 10 years. The, the capabilities of AI has, have matured largely. And nowadays is a much more reliable, much more mature technology and, and, uh, and paradigm. And how we see that? We see that AI ML has come a long way in the algorithm development. In the last few years, we are seeing wonderful things like reinforcement learnings, advances in, in convolutional neural networks, the rise of transformers that is giving you know, space for all these wonderful solutions uh, and products to develop around. But it's not just cool and interesting algorithms. Uh, AI is also becoming more performant. Uh, and we are seeing advances in quantization. We're seeing specialized hardware and architectures being deployed to carry these uh, AI models to different places, not only in the cloud anymore, but, but rather on the, on the field where, where it's needed. Um, we see also that AI is getting more transparent. The, the shift towards explainable AI has meant that the dark, you know, opaque algorithms are not good enough anymore, and there are serious uh, pushes and serious mechanisms to make sure that AI is fair, is transparent, can be audited, it can be understood by stakeholders, and uh, thus uh, earning, earning uh, trust. Um, AI, uh, AI ML has also very importantly become a much more industrialized tool, and this has been achieved via advances in MLOps and in, it, in experimental tra tracking. Um, there's a, a Tools around AI and ML development have been standardized, as well as CI/CD pipelines that come from from AI, from the IT world now are routinely applied quite successfully in the IT OT convergence as well. Um, so, another way to see to answer the question why AI is because we have proven that the the, the metrics that AI can can solve the use cases have really mature and become common places in the, in the industry. Predictive maintenance with their capacity of a really increased or OEE, as well as quality control where we can achieve 100% control rates, uh, process optimization for uh, tasks as important as uh, uh, production efficiency, energy management, and so forth. Needless to say, of the, the advances that AI ML brings on supply chain optimization, propel the, the rise of uh, all sorts of, of tools and techniques uh, to make supply more reliable and, and more efficient. 
But why now? AI's been around for a while, so why, why is now a good idea? Why is now a better idea than it was 10 years ago? Well, now the investment ecosystem has also matured. Um, in the manufacturing sector, we've seen uh, a 17-fold, a 15-fold increase in, in, in investment over the last uh, five to six to, to 10 years. So as, as a whole, the manufacturing sector is, is taking notice of how mature the technologies are, how uh, the, 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 the ecosystem of partners and, uh, and tools is becoming stronger and stronger and more, uh, uh, more, more trustworthy and are willing to invest in it. Why now? Because now we have a stronger focus that perhaps we, before we did, we did not have as an industry. We have a certain focus on sustainability and decarbonization to name a few. And that means a lot. That means that everybody, the industry is advancing at unison towards a common goal of decarbonizing, spending less energy to, uh, to comply with the, with, the, with the European and American regulations and so forth. So there's this underlying goal, underlying perspective that is permeating through the industry, making it, making it, uh, making it really, really more mature. Um, why now? Because now we have a, a, a stronger pace of digitalization integration. In that sense, uh, Litmus has done an amazing job really bridging the gap between the OT and IT world. Now, uh, in the early 2000s, we're, we're still like initial research in IoT, initial integrations, but over the last you know, few years, now we have an ecosystem of really mature IoT platforms that are capable of harnessing the power of data, are capable of bringing data together so uh, the solutions that AIML brings can be executed at scale. Lastly, the startup growth, the startup environment has grown quite a bit, and that's a strong indication of the capacity of the market to, to evolve and to innovate. Um, not only in, in IoT related platforms, but for example, in clean tech. Clean tech was not even a concept a few years ago, and now it's its own sub-market and it's experiencing exponential growth and has only been possible uh, to open this new market because of this convergence of, of OT, because of the, of the, the power that AI and AIML brings to the table. Why now? Why now AI? Because now the, the tech stack is, is healthier than before. Um, the technology has matured, and not only uh, because you know we have had more time developing algorithms, which is true, but because now we are being more serious and we have industrialized our way of thinking. Now we are adopting industrial protocols and architectures such as MQTT, Kafka, uh, DLMS for for energy uh, management. Um, another way of, of describing this technology maturity is in uh, the edge ecosystem. The, the power, the processing power of edge computing has uh, has grown exponentially over the last years, and that has enabled us to really put the intelligence, really put uh, deploy solutions that a few years ago were not even possible, were, were, were nothing but a dream. Now can we, we can do computer vision on high throughput, on the edge, and do a lot of heavy lifting that we can we could only thought about in years ago, or were only achievable uh, from a uh, from a from the cloud. And very, very importantly, the business model has matured. Uh, maybe now hyperscalers and, and, and cloud models have become uh, more accessible, but also the business models have, a, have, have matured. Um, we are evolving from a SaaS-based model to more like more of the performance-based contracts to that really uh, guarantees an outcome for, for the client implementing those solutions. We are being more aware as, as partners that, uh, it, that the, the, the industrial sector needs a balance between capex investment and opex, and we are being more receptive to that and accommodating our business models to be compliant, to be the right business model for the industrial sector. Lastly, the AI solutions are being productized. We are, we're, we're long, long uh, the days where AI was in, like an experimental. Our activity are long gone, and now we have products, really uh, mature, mature products, well supported products built around uh, tasks such as computer vision or time series analysis. The partner ecosystem has also matured, not just the industry, not just the technologies, but us, the partners that help you, uh, that, that are implementing these solutions. They are becoming more knowledgeable, and, and we have taken the, the, the learnings from the last 10 years and really evolved.
we as, as a partners are now more expert with, with our expertise in the industrial sector has, has grown exponentially we have there's a, 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 an ongoing strong investment in really acquire the competencies that we were lacking in embedded system in control engineering in iot to, to name a few we have also become more aware on, on how we collaborate with uh, with uh, uh, industrials and uh, uh, that has seen the flourish of many strong collaborations between large and small manufacturers and industrials and uh, partners large and small and that is certainly the the the, the business model that is, that is propelling the, the growth of ai based solutions and the adoption now to tell you a little bit about how we go about being a good partner and why it's important for us and, and, and who we are in this uh, rich ecosystem. GFT is an IT service company headquartered in Germany with a global presence. We are 12,000 technologists throughout the world who solve problems for, uh, for our clients in different industries. Our growth is very organically. We started in 1987. We have grown from being a company mostly focused on banking to having now a, a three-tier strategy. Since 2017, we have a dedicated sector for industrial solutions. And in this, uh, in this sector is where we uh, have uh, um, worked with some of the, of the biggest names out there, our reputation precedes us and we are trusted by the, the markets in, in, in different industries. In GFT, we take serious innovation seriously and we build our, our industry solutions upon the shoulders of innovation. We are an enterprise-grade software provider. However, our, to, in order to, to become leaner and faster, our solutions are built on the shoulders of artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, data analytics, DLT and crypto, and with a focus on, on human, with a focus on human centered design in our design studio. We combine this, uh, these offerings together to create transversal, highly collaborative solutions that can be deployed quickly and maintained uh, for, for clients for, for many years to, to come. As an industrial player, although GFT grew from the IT sector, we have taken strides to become more OT aware and we have grown to be a serious player in the OT sector with experience in topics such as PLC programming, HMI development, SCADA to name a few. So we're at a very interesting point of convergence between cloud and AI, traditional OT services and with the capabilities to integrate both and really be a one-stop shop for, for OT IT integration. Let me tell you a little bit about solutions in practice and share now some strategy of how we make sure that, that the solutions that are developed for our clients can grow and can become a portfolio and can, and can accelerate their, their, their path to value. We believe that industrial solutions can normally be, one, be focused on one of three areas. Some Solutions are really focused on enterprise management layers in those thinking along the lines of the IC95 and tech stack. Here we see use cases that are seeking to optimize a business operation. Uh, maybe the, there's a strong component of enterprise data and when we need to enhance and, and enable the strategic business decision to gain operational efficiencies. Another way to look at the business of the use cases for industrial solutions maybe is to look at it from the lens of solutions that are focused on IT on OT layers, but that we don't have a, uh, that don't have a close control group. Here we are talking mostly about use cases where we we want to monitorize, monitor and analyze operational data, maybe to inform decision making, increasing awareness and understanding without the too many control. Part. Lastly, and another, let's say, family of business cases are those that are focused on OT with a close control loop. And here we are talking about those type of solutions that for which we want to develop some uh, machine learning model. We want to enhance a process and we want to act on that business model automatically by executing on, on uh, efficiency gains, executing on quality control gains automatically. 
it is for us it's important to have this perspective on on these three families of, of use cases as they share commonalities uh, and different family of use cases evolve different technology decisions that uh, at the end of the day result in faster deployment more repeatable solution development and that our clients see it when they get in the path of developing, for example, enterprise manager layers, they find themselves with the ability to reuse assets, the ability to, to, uh, to accelerate the, their, their next development. Let me give you an, ex an example. If you are in the, in the path of trans digitally transforming your business, you probably have considered an architecture such as this. You have uh, your production process and some OT, layers that where you have your control set your sensors your SCADA a little bit higher up you have your MES your QMS and you have your look just call this your manufacturing operations manager um, higher above you have your ERP CRM etc and you must also have other assets in a highly integrated environment you will have to have integrations layer that marry these two you also have to have some strategies for for consuming and ingesting data and to achieve you know machine learning training to, to create the, the, the intelligence that uh, that the organization needs when we consider use cases from the point of view of, of the of the family of business cases I mentioned before different parts of this general architecture become relevant to give you a different view of what this type of general architecture means from, from the point of view of some specific specific solutions. We see how Litmus, of course, plays a, a great role in the integration from the OT data, in the management from AI solutions, in the deployment of AI ML models to the factory floor, and a rich, rich landscape that, that can be replaced at, at any time, but the, the, the connections, the type of architecture remains largely untouched. Going back to the case of solutions that pertain to management systems, we're probably looking at uh, instances where we have in integrated, but normally don't have a, a high throughput, uh, real life necessity. So some of the parts of this architecture become uh, unnecessary. To give you an example, let me tell you about the work we have done for a very for global automaker in which we develop a solution for optimizing the assembly line. The problem, as just clearly, we need to optimize the allocation of thousands of work elements, meaning tasks, parts, and tools to the, to the hundreds of workstations along the assembly line. With, with some constraints, some constraints of process, cycle time, and ergonomics. So this was a, 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 a project we did where uh, an AI model had to learn all sorts of patterns from historical data that validated or not some proposed cadence of work. As highlighted before, the, the focus here was not on, on high volume real-time data, but in enabling the strategic decision making. Uh, and thus the, the architecture that the client implemented uh, had a more uh, management level focus. Another example we implemented for a top five global automotive supplier is um, the, the forecast their energy demand and act on the uh, on, uh, on big mitigation. Um, the problem that, that needed to be solved is that the energy consumption patterns for this client were, were very spiky. So they needed to a, a capacity. They needed the capacity to tell beforehand what was going to be their consumption, uh, 15 minutes ahead to 10 days ahead. Here uh, we enter in another architectural pattern that puts more emphasis on the integration of real-time data, so data from energy meters and so forth. So the architectural decisions had to take into account. The, the throughput, the volume of the data comes from the from the factory floor and from the meters, uh, evolving thus other uh, types of uh, uh, solutions in the in the global architecture. Another example along the same line with the same lines is uh, the project we did for another top five global automotive supplier in which we're 
automating the, the inspection of the of some welding in, in, in the seats of the cars. Again, we're talking about a, a use case that is highly dependent on data being consumed from the factory floor. So evoke some some decisions that in, that are really related to high volume uh, interactions, high volume uh, throughput, and uh, a very dynamic uh, storage as well as as AI ML. However, in this case, there's not a, a, a necessity to to, to uh, automate the, the control loop. So the gains that the client has uh, are on the on the size of insights that on the, the shape of insights that the um, the experts get. An example of where we have done executed projects that do the whole loop with uh, automated control. It's for a um, global kitchen and bath cabinet manufacturer. We had a manual a manual quality control operations. We were able to help them replacing that uh, manual quality control with a control based on computer vision. And then uh, with a robotic system that uh, handles the, the assets as they are approved or sent back for rework. Here we're talking about quality, uh, we're talking about close control loop. So uh, with a focus on, on OTA. So, very, very important for this client was the, the capacity of ingesting data at high volume, the life is of, of, uh, of data with, with uh, platforms such as Litmus, high capacity of, of broadcasting that data and, and, and of processing it on, on the fly to get uh, a decision, a pass fail flag in, in real time. Then the difference from the, from the other patterns that I've shown uh, before, here we did um, Add on what was happening on, on the on the on the factory floor, the AI ML made a decision. This this part, this asset needs to be reworked, and uh, the, an action was sent uh, via an edge intelligence manager to the robots that picked and manipulated the uh, the assets. So, um, just to, to to wrap up the, the this part of the of the examples, uh, someone use case that we have seen a lot and we there's uh, you know generally a lot of conversation is about energy consumption optimization and energy money in general here we have the experience of having worked in the past in task of really optimizing the high consumption uh, equipments like uh, air, air generation uh, like furnaces like cold rooms uh, here we're talking about situations in which we have to, again, consume a large amount of data from the factory floor, data about energy, marry it together, and create an intelligence that will, tell you, that will tell us how this equipment that is so precious, so valuable for the client, needs to be operating so that their energy consumption is lower. In that case, the, the, the necessity to, to, to close the loop in real time is paramount, so we rely on uh, the, the capacities of, uh, of AI ML to tell us what is the right course of action and to tell us fast and on the capacities of the edge intelligence like a little manager to, to really shift that intelligence to, 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 to make it available for the, the equipments on the, in the field. Um, so as you can see, the, the, the three different patterns I show have that, that sense of really evoking different parts of our, of our general architecture, really keep bringing the possibility for reuse, uh, reuse um, assets, reuse strategy, and, and really have a, a, like a portfolio of solutioning that you can execute time and time again with incremental modifications to a core infrastructure, but evoking accelerated and, and larger returns every time. So if I can leave you with, with some idea, and to, just to wrap things up, let, let me wrap it up in the following way. A lot has changed over the last 10 years. Uh, AI, to, uh, or the AI or T or however you might want to call it, the technology isn't what it used to be. Now we have more compute power and closer to the field. We have more intentional technological development. There's not a, the IT world creating the school algorithms anymore, but we are now really embedded in the industrial sector. And now we have strong foundations for IoT platforms that simply we didn't have before. And this has enabled us 
to really act and think and operate in the industrial sector as industrialists ourselves. Furthermore, the industry is right. We, uh, uh, now we have, uh, we have, we are converging towards a standardization. There's still some a lot of work to do, but we are slowly converging towards toward standardization and interoperability. We have a very favorable environment ecosystem and a cultural readiness that 10 years ago was not there. Um, we, uh, the industry has learned from the, from the, let's say the, the, uh, the risks taken 10 years ago to now to be a, little, a lot more uh, intentional, be a lot more. Uh, more aggressive when they have to be, but, uh, but a little bit more clear on what, uh, what uh, the, the, the return in their, their investment will be. From the point of view of um, experience and public studies, the, the partner ecosystem has also changed. Now we're in the age of alliances and co-development, and that's the way forward. You know, we have all learned that AI-backed solutions are not a thing you buy in, in, in the candy shop. They require joint, they require acting as one, it requires this long-lasting uh, cooperation. The, set, the models, the business models, very importantly, have evolved. And, and, and as a, a, a sort of representative from the partner ecosystem, I'm very proud of saying that, that, that we, are, we have changed the way we think and we, we are much more open to uh, contracting for, for performance, contracting for uh, related to OT, to really bring our, our business model uh, to the, the, the common language of the industrial world. And lastly, the, the, the solutions are more mature, that, that we are not experimenting anymore. We have decanted to a set of high value, highly achievable use cases that can be implemented, uh, it really can be implemented by, by any good uh, partner, any serious, uh, reliable partner with them. So just to leave you with a call to action, identify with long-term strategy, but don't forget your, your risky bets and your moonshots, the three are necessary. You need your, your, your certain wins to keep you going. And you need your risky bets, those are, are, are more, you know, uh, that, that can, be a, a, can mean an increased revenue down the line. You have to have a balance, identify those, write them down. Then partner up, call us, call GFT, call Litmus, and make sure that you're partnering this, uh, this understanding industrial sector. You know, this, uh, 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 we are in a, in a good path, but uh, you need to, to find your partner with, with care, get them well, and reach a pace. Uh, developing AI back solutions, it's a marathon. You got to go little by little, stage by stage. Have those use cases that take six months to develop, but get in a, in a path of, of, of getting the, that, that, that pace for, for developing solutions. So, that's me, and uh, how to reach me. And uh, thank you so much for your attention, and it was lovely to be here.